The camera is directly over three. So this is three. I think this is three. The numbers are quite hard to read. I know that says three, but if we kind of pan around a bit, you know, some of the numbers do do seem to be quite difficult because there are some black pot spots and so on. So three is actually, I found three quite hard to spot. <laughs> so let's see if I can get a beer out of the beer box without getting my hand stuck. So I did the same whole oh, bloody hell I left. Olaf's back on it again. <laughs> Olaf, Olaf, please. Please, little man. Go over there for a second. That's it. <laughs> Olaf's desperate for a beer. Olaf is absolutely desperate for a beer tonight. Imagine trying to find the numbers while drunk. Yeah, it's an awful design. I really don't like this year's design of Advent Color. It's, it's, it's rubbish. Right, I can make this a hole a bit bigger. I can make the hole a bit bigger and probably... I can get two hands in that hole. It's coming back. It's coming back. I can't do it. I can't do it. Okay, right. I learned yesterday how to get out without sticking my hand in. I can edit it. I can edit it off the stream to make it look like this worked perfectly. Oh, I still, I still can't get it out. Here we go. Whoa, okay, so we have Utopia. Utopian, Utopian. So this is a Vienna Killer Lager. Um, okay. So what does it say on the back? It tells us, Vienna Lager was a revolution when it was first brewed in the mid 19th century. Combining Bavarian brewing techniques with um, paler British style malts. A once nearly forgotten style, um, a uh, Vienna Keller lager um, pays homage. I can't read it in the light. Like it's like real difficult text to read in this light. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Lager pays homage to those early beers. We use traditional decoration mulch with British grown Vienna and Munich malts, leading the beer depth and complexity. A slow, cold fermentation followed by five weeks of lagering has resulted in a beer which is easy drinking as it is flavorful. Copper in color, a rich brady, brady aroma, rounded out by a crisp, bittersweet finish. This is the time um, for a Vienna comeback. Olaf is too cute. He's a good cat. He has been quite, he has been quite needy since, um, since the incident we don't talk about. Since the event. Since the event with the other cat, he's um he's been quite clingy and quite needy with me, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, thank you for the little kisses. He's a good boy. He's a really good boy. Oh man, look how much head I've got. I've got so much head on that. So it's supposed to be. I think it said it was a dark, ready beer. Vienna, Vienna hops. Oh, it smells. It smells quite Belgiany and quite spicy. Mm, okay, that's quite nice. <laughs> he knows he's on camera. He knows he's on camera now. He's seen himself. So my monitors have roughly his eyes looking straight at himself on the monitor there. It's quite a flat flavour though. So it smells quite powerful. The smells really strong, and quite um, yeah. Like I said, it smells like like a Belgian uh, a Belgian white beer. Um, with, with some spice in it, but the smell, the taste is a little bit weaker than that. But it's a nice taste. It's um quite pleasant. Yeah, I guess it is. Ian, when you when you shake the can up, it does come out as a complete mess. But it's not bad. It's nice. I really like that. I really like. That. I can sit there. This is the sort of beer you could probably have two or three of in an evening, maybe more. Depends how much of a drinker you are. But for me, probably two or three of these. And I think I just just get through them quite pleasantly, kind of just sipping along. It's quite nice. So I think for this, I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. So cheers, everybody.